here we are back at uh, the short, snappy snippets of the Through Your Looking Glass podcast at uh, SampleCon. And we're joined by my dear friend, Katie Gross, as in Cross, which is the right way to pronounce it, just in case you're wondering, um, who I'm super excited to be speaking with because personally, I'm just so impressed by what you're building at Suzy, how you've been developing your career over the past couple of years, and honestly, how you're leading and shaping the industry. So I'm just thrilled to have you here uh, on our little show today. Thank you, thrilled to be here. Well, I, not everyone may not know you as well as I do. So maybe just a quick intro, like who you are and, and kind of where you're at now and just kind of just a quick snippet of, sure. of the story, the Katie story. Yeah. So the Katie story, um, lifelong market researcher, psychology degree, came out of university with no skill sets at all except for SPSS. So inevitably ended up in market research. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, started actually um, on the client side. So I worked yeah. in a food and beverage company. I was buying a lot of data from Mintel, from IRI, from Nielsen, attending a lot of focus groups. Um, and that's kind of where I cut my teeth on consumer insights. Moved up to London, worked at Mintel. Again, I was a researcher, putting together those market research reports. And uh, head of sales tapped me on the shoulder and said, did you want to be in account management? Mm. And I said, no. All these guys. Oh, you said, no, you're I definitely said, no, not doing definitely account management. Not. Exactly. All these boys in pinstripe suits with their sunglasses, <laughs> and their company Audi 83s. It's yeah, not yeah, all yeah, my personality. Yeah, yeah. And they said, well, let's just give it a go. And I loved it from day one. My first client, um, a UK's version of 7-Eleven, a store called Spar. And uh, I understood that sales was not about trying to sell them something. It was really about just having a conversation. Tell mm -hmm. me what you do. Tell me how you're currently doing it. What are you challenged with? And if you have a tool that can fit that need, the sale is almost kind of a happy byproduct of just being able to help that company with mm -hmm. what we do. Mm -hmm. So never really looked back. Um, I've moved my way through syndicated companies like Mintel and Stylus. Um, and obviously in the sample world, I've worked at both Toluna UK and USA, um, as well as Sint um, on the exchange side of the business. And then changed companies in the middle of the global pandemic in July of last year. So it was July of last year? It's, it's I'm coming up to my one year anniversary at Suzy. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so Suzy was a, I was a company I was trying to sell to for the last yeah. couple of years yeah. um, while we'd sent. And um, they have the we on our own panel, so therefore I can never quite crack it. And uh, inevitably, it was actually a quirks right before the pandemic when I met the CEO, uh, Matt Britton, and a couple months later he said, why don't you join us? And here I am. That's fantastic. Well, it immediately leads to question number one, which is how is joining a new company in the middle of the pandemic, especially as a very senior role, right? Yes. That, how, what was that like? It was crazy, but wonderful. Okay. Um, the Suzy did a fantastic job of those couple of weeks, months um, or two before I joined, making sure that I was very aligned with the rest of the, the C-level um, folks. So I spoke to the chief product officer for quite a long time, our head of audience for quite a long time, um, our chief HR officer, um, which I'll come back to, because having a chief HR mm. officer mm -hmm. is incredibly important, um, and really aligning to understand more about what the company's trying to achieve in the, the vision of the company before I joined. Okay. Um, and then upon joining, they sent me a beautiful welcome pack, t-shirts and stickers. Gotta get all the swag things, in, right? All the swag, but also, of course, it was a very difficult summer last night oh. in the USA. Forget about it, right? And they also sent me um, a t-shirt that was made by the um, my predecessor. So my predecessor joined TikTok, Sofia Hernandez, um, and she actually had a clothing company with her husband um, related to equality. And so her t-shirt is, my fight is your fight is our fight. So Susie had sent me that t-shirt along with their kind of mission that is we enable human understanding. And this is our mission. We are here to also help enable human understanding. So. I got a sense of the company's culture wow. just from that welcome pack. That was way beyond here's your nice laptop and t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also the more about the, the mission that's far beyond just market research. That's so incredible. And it's it's visceral for me watching this change from Scent to Suzy. And this is nothing about Scent, but just how strong that Suzy culture seems to be. Yeah. And you can feel it in the in, not only in the official like marketing, but in the post, there, there seems to be a really strong culture element. What's what's driving that? Yeah, um, I think a couple of a couple of different things. What's been awesome for me um, is to work for a, a CEO and a president who came from 
not all from market research. Yeah. They, they're ad agency folks. They yeah. both had their own agencies. Um, Matt had founded Mr. Use, which became MLY, that became Publicis. Our president, Arby, they were um, fraternity brothers at Boston University together. Yeah, yeah. Arby had Big Fuel Communications, which also sold to Publicis, and they kind of rejoined and uh, had said, let's do this, let's build this great company. Mm. So they know how to build brands, and that includes internal. So ah, it's not just about the so external you, facing brand, they know how to build it. Brand. That's incredible. So they're, yeah. they're building a brand internally as much as they're building it externally. Exactly, yeah. And one of the early hires, Matt mentioned, um, something that people typically don't do until they're about 150 people is hire a chief HR officer. We hired one when we were only 50 people. Yeah. And because Matt wanted that culture to be ingrained early, so that mm. as we scaled, um, we have that, that culture kind of built from, from in between. Um, so it's been wonderful working with a, a chief HR officer um, who is far beyond benefits and pool tables. We have book club. Mm. So when I joined, I was sent Radical Candor, um, the book, and mm -hmm. we have a book club on Radical Candor. And then the author actually came and presented to our company. So it's full, fully integrated. That's amazing. What a great program that is, huh? Yeah, exactly. We then had to read Subtle Acts of Exclusion. Um, and again, we had sessions where we did book club. We broke off into sessions and we we spoke about it and it was great to really be candid with each other around what we had faced or what we maybe been um, you know, not great at ourselves um, with our own kind of internal biases. So it's great to really kind of have that culture, um, you know, and, and to do the hard work. It's, it's radical counter is hard work. It's hard work. It is hard work, but it's, it's pays off. That is incredible. Uh, I, when I think about radical candor, I think about not only with other people, but yourself. And maybe it'd be mm -hmm. harder to be candid. Maybe yes. harder, hardest to be candid with yourself than anyone yeah. else. I agree. But uh, so we're at we're at SampleCon, mm -hmm. and one company you said earlier, which I know to be true, Susie has its own panel. Yeah. So how do you see the relationship of Susie and SampleCon, and its real its role within this ecosystem? Yeah. Well, what was interesting about obviously the panel this morning is um, you and your panel have talked about the fact that hundreds of us in the room own their own panels. Yes but there's very little consistency um, often, and we're not collaborating enough, mm -hmm. I don't think. And Priscilla obviously had a round table yesterday on collaboration is the new competition. So we're here to learn and to be a part of it. We're yep. obviously the same challenges that you mentioned this morning, how do we ask gender? Yep. Um, and we started testing that actually, so we actually yep. did a monadic test recently sure. with our own, we have an LGBTQ panel and a, a gen pop panel. Um, and we tested it, but like, we don't know the best way of asking that question either. But if we're doing it, we need to make sure that everyone is doing it. Because yes. if, if ultimately P&G would like the question to be asked a different way from J&J &J and a different way from Kraft Heinz, we're not going to get any kind of We've got consistency. A problem. Yeah. So we need to work together. Um, so while we own our own panel, we want to make sure we're in lockstep with panels in general. A hundred percent. We're out there uh, listening to the quality conversations, of course. Yeah. Um, we all face the same quality issues and supply and demand issues, so let's solve them together. I could not agree more on, on the quality side, of course, learning because that's never going to go away, so always mm -hmm. being on the front end of what's changing with, with quality in all of its aspects. I'm a, a, a starch, starch, staunch, staunch advocate? Staunch. Staunch advocate <laughs> for, for standards around these profilers. Yeah. Um, yes. I think because one, from my standpoint, having consistency means that our customers are getting a consistent product and answer. Mm -hmm. But you know as well as I do, forcing everyone to reintegrate and map over and over and over again is yeah. one of the things that slow their industry down, that speeds it up. Yeah. And so I think we have an unlocked, unlocked level of growth if we can align on profiling yeah. standards as an example. Yep. Yeah. So okay. um, the question is, is it now we're at a place in a cooperation maturity point we can actually do it? Because it's mm -hmm. been on the docket. We've talked about stuff like this for a long time. Yeah. But are we at a place where everyone's like, okay, now it's happening. Now mm -hmm. we can actually commit to it. We see what this is for. Yeah, yeah. I think when I heard Mario this morning mention, I'm having to buy on the exchanges, like it was a dirty word <laughs> almost. But that's, it's, it, Yes, a lot of, because, because of the supply and demand issues, even if people have relied on their own proprietary panel for, for so long, we need to start you know, working together. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. and it kind of reminds me, I remember I worked in beauty and personal care when I was at Mintel, and a number of those brands said, we'll never sell on Amazon, we'll only sell through 
Blooming Day and all those Absolutely. And so on. And of course, inevitably, that's not where the consumers went anymore. That's right. They, that's had, right. <laughs> they went to Amazon. It's, I think it's probably the same for the exchanges. Of, yep. In proprietary panels, the buyers are at the exchanges. And so it's probably time that everybody, again, collectively got ready for that. Well, there's a, there's a very old story when uh, Scent and Lucid were first partnering mm -hmm. back in like 2010, 2011. We literally just adopted the book of Scent profilers. Yeah because Scent had already profiled like 90 questions in 15 languages. Mm -hmm. And we're like, that's it's great. Copying. And we don't have to do any mapping. We'll just adopt the map. Yeah. Now things have diverged since for a variety of reasons, but that moment we knew that it would be easier for all of us if we just adopted the same profiler. And of course I had yeah. folks on my saying, well, we, our, whatever it is, household income question. Wait, we ask dog ownership is Whatever, we're like, yeah. I don't, <laughs> that's less important than, than being on the same page. Yeah. So. I'd love to see something like that occur. Yeah. And what's been great for me over the last year is working directly with brands again. It's, mm, it's got to be great, right? Um, it's been fascinating and, and wonderful. But ultimately, what they care about is, should I be selling this flavor to the dog owner or this flavor to the mm, dog owner? Mm -hmm. And all of the kind of, in a way, nonsense. It's like, this, what's the best way of us profiling in? How do we scale that profiling question? We kind of sometimes lose sight, I think, of the fact that there's a company trying to make a billion dollar decision. I'm just talking to dominoes mm -hmm. and let's make it a little simpler for them to, <laughs> to get to that point. Can we remove the friction? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, platforms like Suzy are doing so well because we try and keep everything radically simple and remove the friction, even just our business model, it's a subscription, it's an annual subscription. Yeah. So many of our clients said the friction of just raising a PO every time they wanted to run a project was so bad that a subscription with Suzy for the year is kind of like, whew, I've removed the friction of having to go raise a PO and ask for a price and wait six weeks for the PO to be approved. And All that stuff matters in terms of friction. Just the pricing of sample as a process is friction. Yes, exactly. A number of our customers are just trying to remove that as well. It's yeah. just embedded in the overall thing. You don't have to think about it. Exactly. It allows for the customer to just say yes and not worry about how this thing is priced because let's be honest, brands talking about sample is friction, whether it's called price or anything. It just It's such a different world than they expect. and have they to force them to understand what's going on is probably not a good use of time. Absolutely. And that, um, I saw your post on LinkedIn recently, somebody said, what's the, what is the way that you guys calculate incidence rate? And lots of people replied and you were like, why are we still talking about <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Yeah. Um, and when I joined Susie for the first month or two, I'm like, oh, I haven't said incidence rate or CPI in a very long time. We have a cost per question model. Yep. So if you want to use one of your questions to screen, yep. you can screen the way that you want to screen. Yep. And then we contact, we have a fantastic recontact rate. So you can recontact those people who selected dog ownership or big dog ownership or whatever it is. Drinkers yeah. or whatever, X, Y, Z. Um, so they utilize their questions to screen and then they just retarget with questions. And so we have a cost per question model, not a cost per person model. So I haven't had to use the word incidence rate in a very long time. God bless you for <laughs> not yes. having, isn't it freeing think, yeah. though? So freeing. And again, that friction is removed. That, yep. that, that client is, doesn't have to learn what incidence rate means or, or you know, what does it mean it's dropped? What happens now? What is all that stuff? Yeah. What is all that stuff? Yeah, exactly. And, and same for length of interview. We cap all of our surveys at 20 questions. I can happily talk about that all day because respondent experience is key. Um, but that also means that we have one price point. So there's, we've removed the length of interview conversation. We've removed the incidence rate conversation. So therefore there's no CPI. It's just cost it, per it allows the customer to say yes, 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 and go and just use their subscription and create work. Yeah. And get the answers they need without all that yeah. noise. Exactly. Which helps them to be more agile. It's like true agility and to be more agile and to test and learn and test and learn and test and learn and I cannot tell if you're having fun yet. <laughs> I'm so I'm just it just radiates how much fun you're having at Susie. It's such a blast yes. to see you through I guess from afar. But yeah. it's just been great to watch. I'm so excited for what Susie's gonna create and what you're gonna do there. Yeah, it's it's really fun. I uh, did obviously a huge amount of research before I joined the company. Um, uh, Shaggy was at our opening. So when Susie rebranded from CrowdTap to Susie three years ago at South by Southwest, first of all, they launched a South by Southwest. It's super cool. <laughs> we had Shaggy as the opening act at the uh, giant party. Uh, cool. <laughs> Kevin Durant and his investment company is one of our investors. Super cool. And over the summer, we just did our first um, company event. We were 67 ish people when I joined in July last year. We're about 162 now. For the very first time, we brought everybody together just a couple of weeks ago. 
we rented out a movie theater to do um, our company all hands um and then we had a giant yacht party and it was up and down the hudson river we looked at new york or we it, ooh, a new york tech firm yeah uh, that sounds and, great uh, it's wonderful so i'm like this is why i'm here this is yeah this is cool so well we need more cool we need more we sizzle need more in rest cool tech and a lot more we should have shaggy perform more often exactly yeah and we should do more south by right yeah and rick kelly from Plus cycle just yesterday mentioned his struggle hiring engineers and i said is it because market research isn't cool and he said yeah it's not cool so obviously we're trying to change the word to rest tech to make it a little cooler but yeah. we need more cool in this industry. we need more cool it's time to bring sexy back to sample <laughs> 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 Well, with that, thank you, Katie. I appreciate this short, snappy, sizzling podcast. But uh, thanks for saying yes. Pleasure. And congrats. Seriously. Thank you so much. It's been a journey. Be sure to subscribe to our show wherever you get your podcasts. For information on ResTech, our complete list of episodes, and more, visit luc.id slash looking glass.